afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Every year we're like, can we remember how we do this? But here we are. First art discovery of 2022. So, so good to be here. And this one, um, you know, throughout the summer, we think of these ideas. And we're like, I think we really need to share about artwork that is not just great to look at, but it's also functional. So we came up with fabulous and functional, and this is our crew today. Um, I'm Susan Poge, along with my husband Jake. We are the, the owners and promoters of the show, and we're so grateful to have you here with us today. And hopefully, we have some people watching online. Um, and we've opened up the 22 season with a bang, and we're so grateful for the beautiful weather and the extraordinary art. So today, we're going to hear from some of our um, very creative members. Starting with um, at the far end, Michael Jones from Big Fork, Montana. And then we have Diana Ferguson from right here in, in the Phoenix area. And we have this lovely couple from Iowa, all the way from Iowa, and Latin director. And, uh, they work as a team. They were actually featured last night on uh, Channel 12 News. They came out with a little story about their functional art, and it really was great. It's on our Facebook celebration, find our Facebook page if you want to catch that. Yes. You can see it. Um, really, really good. Great representation. So um, I'm going to ask to start with Michael and just tell, tell them we are a little bit of background about you, and then we'll get rolling into questions after that. Good. Uh, yeah, you can hear me from there. Uh, so, Michael Jones, I'm out of Newport, Montana. That, that is home, but I've been in the celebration here for 26 or 27 years. <laughs> We're not even sure, but but we wouldn't miss it. This, this has become a unbelievable part of our life. So, to just love it, love the community, love having it in the Thank you. Uh, I am Diane Ferguson, and I am a Phoenix resident. Um, I'm a jewelry artist, and uh, I would share my sentiment of that celebration. This has been a lifetime experience for me over the next six or seven years. I'm not counting right now, but basically just incredible. Um, and hold this for this. I'm Sunny Rupert, and I have from Brad. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. That's most of the talking. Exactly. Uh, we have actually this song in our second year uh, here at Celebration, and it too has changed our lives um, beyond measure. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are happy to have you here. At We'll go ahead and start it with, with Michael. Michael's the longest on the panel here, and uh, he's very well known. Many of you might even have pieces of his for the amazing courtyard pieces. Um, fabulous, for sure. Some of those are more fabulous and decorative, but you also have some amazing functions. So I really think it'd be great, Michael, if you could share a little bit about what brought you to steel and how you started incorporating these very functional things into what you do. Love it. Yeah, thank you, Susan. So, so, you know, being a metal artist, you, you get to work with material that is going to long, long out, outlive myself, all, all of us. If, if, if anything has lasted through the ages, it's been the metal work. And that has always intrigued me. I love doing functional pieces, and the, 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 but the way it really started out, I do a lot of gates. And the way that started was I needed a gate for myself. And, and so gates have historically always been the weak spot in the fence. And I thought, I'm going to turn that around. And there's no reason it shouldn't be a piece of art. And that's where it started. And it just popped in there. Uh, I do lots lots of gates. I love to design gates. Uh, when I design a piece, it's, it's going to be a one of, it's going to reflect your interest, it's going to reflect an architecture style of home, and it's going to reflect a geographical location. And that's how you get a, a one of uh, 
So besides gates, uh, uh, I do tables. Uh, this is one of my tables right here. Uh, fire screens as well. Yeah, but fire screens. Uh, uh, chandeliers, that's something that I had thought about, but that's one of my pieces there. So if you've got a nice big foyer and you're looking for something, that's the way. So uh, I'm an old school guy when it comes to metal work. Uh, so no technology, it, it's all done by hand. So there's there's no plasmas, lasers, uh, water jets, I don't know what's out there. But, but this is all oxy setting torch and forge grinding, hammering, and polishing, and sweat. That's the way it is done. <laughs> so, so let me, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll show you, can I show you a bit about table tables? So th this is one of my my sofa tables, console tables. Uh, I, I like, I like clean. I think there is great simplicity, or great strength in simplicity. To it. So all these elements have been red hot. But this this is rebar. It is half inch number four rebar. Uh, and you can probably drive out around the desert by scraps. It's laying around. But this is all come out of my forge. This has been red hot. The last six or eight inches of that. And then I hammer that out on the uh, on the actual anvil because I want this very hammer tapered organic look. Uh, and, and so. But then you go down to these these prickly pair here, which is all the spots on that are spots of well. So, so you you added material there. Then you come back to a yucca blossom where you actually put the material out. This is red hot, but so it starts off as a red hot bar, and I I split it, and then each mark on here is a different hammer. Board. So so that that kind of what that all about this is a little taller than most tables but um i actually built this table for myself this came right out of my my own house so let's talk about that okay okay i love it and i'm just going to say we've been to michael's shop in montana First of all, big big ones dreamy 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 but the shop is so cool um well worn, I would say. <laughs> and, no, no, that works. And yeah. you know, beautiful examples of your tools and the, the workspace. And we'll talk about twisting stuff later. But uh, anyway, thank you, thank you, Susan. I'd like to yeah. I'd like to do a studio tour someday with that one. Um, and then so Diana is here because she's fabulous, and uh, we really wanted to include the functional aspect of wearable art. We do have several artists. Obviously, we have fine art tours. We have Janet Chico handbags. We have other forms of wearable. But uh, Diana has such a beautiful architectural style, and she comes up with new stuff all the time. It blows my mind. So, um, hear about how we can be beautiful and functional. I think that for myself, I am an artist first and foremost, and I am really invested in. The idea of wearables as as art, as something that you would display when you're not wearing it. And it's really different than a lot of my design work over the last few years. Like, for instance, as a pair of I love shoes. I love shoes. There you go. Is that better? Yeah. And um, I love shoes. And I love to collect shoes. But I collect shoes to display. Not necessarily to wear. And it's just about you know with my coaches and just these different types of pieces like the beaded constructions that are really bracelets, not bracelets around, um, but they also serve as small pieces of art glass soldiers. Same thing with the pins, you know, they're just beautiful to be worn, but they So that's kind of what drives my creativity. It's a butterfly lyric. Little tiny beaded elements that are butterflies. It's adjustable. You know, I like to be functional in my work too. Adjustable so it can fit different 
sizes or look different ways. So, and I think that when you take that approach, it's not as options. So I love how we have the art displayed on the art table. So literally, these are little mini sculptures. I mean, I, yes. that's what I mean. And she'll send me photographs of her and I'm like, how did you do that? And these are all small made out of I think they're not great. And the rest of these silver beads. So that's just always the 
you know, on how we roll, and you know, I trusted him that he had some sort of an idea, and that's how we work. We pass pieces between the two of us, um, so we never know what kind of crazy amount of hours goes into a piece. We just know it's a lot. Um, and I've always said I feel like there's some reason why we led to this material. It's such a unusual material. And last year, we had two clients walk in and ask us if we could help them with the project. And they went on to tell me that they had an architect that was, had what was working, worked on opening up their home uh, into a big open floor plan and had always planned on using cell artwork to dampen the sound in their home. And so I was working here, like, oh my gosh, our work is functional. Um, and we did an entire project for them. We're still working on it. Actually, the sound ladder over there is part of it. The whole, uh, this is this piece as a signature piece. And then we based about five, six, seven more pieces out of that. Um, and it's amazing the difference that it makes. We, we walked in there and we installed the pieces last week and they stood there and said, and I was like, I mean, just saying, it, I've never had a compliment like that. You know, that's an amazing thing for someone to say. Um, and then the other thing that we have discovered is that uh, our work it's something we're looking further into. We don't have a whole lot of details on it. I have a little bit of testimonial, but our art can work to um, really aid with people that have sensory disorders. So autism, you know, your, your whole scale. Um, a friend of ours who has one of our episodes, I actually asked her if she noticed anything with her son, who's about 20 years old, non-verbal. And um, she said, you know, I don't have anything documented. He can't tell me when things are different. But what I've noticed lately is that he does not wear his headphones at home as much as he used to. And she said, in my book, as a you know, parent of a child with autism, anything is a win that can make him more comfortable. And so, you know, it's that that's helping them. And I have noticed a difference. She's an artist herself, so they have a lot of art in their home, and he's very by art, he's, a, he's an amazing artist. Um, that's an amazing moment for us. Do you think it's the tactile issue or it's the visual issue? I, I actually think it's tactile, and I also think, to be honest, I think it's auditory because she said anything you can do for someone on the autism spectrum to reduce the sound that technology makes that the rest of us don't hear that they do hear and makes them uncomfortable is an amazing one. So. Yeah, and uh, the visually in here too, like you, we don't want people running around just having everything here, but you can feel it. And, and I'm going to tell you, when we first, I met Sunny and Brad in 2020 when we were sent home. Yeah. And the Center for the Arts canceled the art festival and then the whole world unraveled. They came over here before they drove all the way back to Iowa. And uh, so I met them in person, and I don't think I actually saw your work, but it's it's so different seeing on photographs. I'm kind of like, wow, that's really different. We like different. It's fabulous. <laughs> and um, you know they have good good recommendations, but when when I saw it in person for the first time, it, it looks real. I mean, it's realism a little bit, but um, we can pass this around. Yes. Yeah. Can I talk about? It? Uh, it's just a sample because everybody does come to our booth, and especially we do a lot of road shows. So like Scottsdale Art Festival, we used to travel three thousand miles a year. And so we have a lot of people coming in, especially kids, wanting to, I, I, after a while, you kind of 
irritated this way. Um, and I, you know, have used saying, you know, we're not a penny uh, sort but, but this is a little sample so that people can touch it. Because it's, it's just human nature. You want to touch it. And, uh, and I get it. Uh, so that's just a little sample so that people can come in and see that, you know, put their fingers through and see what the texture is. And what I like is that everybody purchases a paper sculpture roll felt, sometimes they stumble on it. They get a half brush. I'm thinking, I need to clean my whole house with this right now. Yeah. I'm at home, you know, clean the But that's how you clean it. So, your sound wall, so you have it. Your sound wall, so you have it in that column. Is, it, is that one of yours? Yeah. You want to talk about emergency? Yes. yes. So the sound wall is more like this, or is it more like All of it. All of it comes yeah. to a chorus band, just by the face of the fact that it's a chorus soft material. So when you think of any theater or any, um, you know, sound studio, you always see like those you know, waffle shaped things on the wall. Well, that's what that's doing. And so this is doing the same thing, just in a more beautiful way. And the thicker the piece is, and the more levels, like this piece here, that actually goes, you know, is what deeper in the middle and then recesses back. And the little triangle pieces that catches all of the sound. That it was waterproof. Well, it is. It is somewhat waterproof because it is felt a fur. Um, and, and a hat. You know, you wear your head. Probably wears enough. You know. And we've had a piece actually. We've been testing that. We put a piece that has sold for a while out on our deck. And it has been out there for two years. And I was actually more worried about the collage paper and the backgrounds and the paint for the faces because it's just wow. a little paint. But we can put an exterior varnish on it. And because um, I thought it would be lost. And so, great. Like the Isle of Looking at me. Yes, yeah, we left there. I mean, we do suggest an A. Enclosed, you know, it would protect an area for an outdoor. I wouldn't just come around, you know, sculpture garden. But they have Before we move on, can you talk about how do we get the color? Because you don't get your felt in that color. Yeah. So for the first three years, we did lots of wolves and bears and rabbits and dog portraits, lots and lots of dog portraits. We do do your pets. Um, because he does 85% of really hot works is where we get the felt. Um, and yeah, we're really Colorado. And uh, Trent is an amazing, amazing visionary himself, Trent Johnson. If you've watched Yellowstone at all, oh yeah. So yeah, and that's kind of fun thing. But um, you know, it's neutral colors. So I mean, that's why I can let He does have a, a fashion line, and I have to say that less the rodeo queens because they gotta have a color. So we would get a little color here or there, but not anything that we can rely on. So it's only two years to figure out. Once I figured that out, it basically opened up a whole world to be able to do anything we wanted. Um, and we've always said that your art should never match your soul, but it should match your soul. Um, but now, technically, we can coordinate. <laughs> <laughs> that is okay. Yeah. So, well, that's it's super fun. And, and kind of back to the, the Sound and buffering project. It was a, it is a beautiful contemporary home that had a lot of concrete and metal and ceramic art, lots of art in here. And it was just a perfect compliment to bring in your your works of art and to you know accomplish something they look for it was yeah, we were we were very honored in our first year of being here to be approached to do that project. It's wonderful. 
people, and then to go over to their home and go, oh, this is Carlos's case on the wall, and these are Myers, you know, right? And puppeted. I mean, the whole home is decorated from from artists that are here from celebration. So we felt really honored to have that kind of um, company to be part of that kind of a collection. So many great talented artisans throughout this country that if you just like ask the question, you might get the behind the scenes tour. So if you don't ask, the answers always no. You got a pretty good shot. Yeah. Love it. Love it. So, so uh, you know, I barely touched on fire troops here. I uh, I brought this one up to show here, and it, it is all steel. Well, it's not all steel, it is all metal. You know, a fireplace is always a, a center of attraction. It's always a hole in that hole. So, if, if you can, it's a great place for a piece of art. You know, if, if you don't have a beautiful fire screen, you probably got glass. So, and for some reason, we don't see that sometimes. But, but I love the idea of taking a fire screen. And, and turn this into an, an element that, that really draws your life. So this, this is a fire screen that I did. I've never, I've never been the guy that can just put a bunch of things together and then not have any kind of things. This is actually my own personal fire screen. That this this came from, from my home. And this is about this is about being in this, this show for 20 plus years. And then we headed back to Montana. So uh, I call this heading home. And what this is about is when the show is over uh, by late March, it's starting to turn summer here. But we're going to head north, and in Montana, it is barely great in spring. So that's what this is about. Uh, I, I do own a home here and as well. It's about three plus years. I think it's a place to play out. This is our, so our little Arizona territorial here, but we're headed north into the hail storm. At home, the grizzly bear is just coming out of its distance. We still have those black clouds really lingering. The sun is very low in the sky, but the geese are headed north as well. And they're headed into the swirling winds, and every once in a while, we just get that sliver of sunshine across the horizon. So, that's what I'd like to do. When I design pieces like this, it's going to be about you. It, it, it's going to be personal and it's going to be a wonderful. Thank you. Yes. I wonder about your, some of the custom gates you have done. Oh boy. Is yeah. there they're all around here, they're everywhere, but um, as you said earlier, the gate is your uh, the last forgotten piece of a fence, but if you're going to have a fireplace screen, you might as well have a beautiful one. If you're going to have a gate, you might as well have a beautiful one, and one that expresses who you are, especially a gate being like the entrance. I don't have I don't have a property with a gate yet. Yeah, but, yeah, um, that's, that's a big one. So we don't all have you know, gates on our driveway, but many people do, and why yeah. not have one? Introduces you to know, people coming in. Uh, I love that. Thank you. Yeah, gates, you know, uh, people sometimes look like fast gates. When the gates are absolutely 
your most important architectural detail. You have your roof lines, you have your doors, you have your windows. The gate is what anybody interacts with that comes to your home. It's a focal point. And whether that be a driveway gate or whether it be a courtyard gate, it, it, it is a very, very important architectural detail. So I, I, I've done gates in, in this area for over 30 years. And if you have a chance, uh, I have a couple of gates on display, uh, but, but I also have a book that show different designs to show you where you can go with it. Uh, uh, I, I love to do geometrics, especially with, with the way that architecture is moving into so much very, very contemporary with straight lines. And so to do some geometrics in gates are just outrageous it, you know it gives it a whole other dimension uh, i recently did a gate that they had a front door that they wanted to mimic you know and so i, I designed this gate that had some of those elements and all of a sudden the gate has become more important than the front door it, it, it always has been architecturally that there was great emphasis on the front door and that has evolved and that has evolved to the approach to the front door so it takes can't live without it. Yes. And then for Michael to So um, any questions for Michael before we move on? We always have questions. Yes. yes. The twisted chandelier. Oh, thank you for asking. And tell them how you get those twisted things twisted. Okay. So so back to the end. Very old school with, with metal work. Um, th th there was a time where it, 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 if this wasn't forged and, and raw iron, it wasn't anything. And, and I did that for a lot of years. And so I, I, evolved, I, I felt like I was putting perimeters on myself as an artist. So it really started to evolve me. But I still, uh, if you know anything about metal work, yeah. Uh, there's plasmas, and a plasma is, is, a, is a type of, of cutting tool. So there are CNC's, there are water jets. The, the first element of the first plasma I remember was 1977, and then that was industrially, and I was already doing it freehand with oxy setting torch at that time. I see no reason to change, and, and here I am, this many years later, I still see no reason to change. So. A twisted pieces will, will, will kind of. If you look at some of my pieces, if you look at the courtyard, you'll see the, the pieces that are twisted and some are textured. But being that old school, everything you see out there is twisted by hand. Uh, I have an oven that I built. That oven opening is just a, a, a four by eight opening that is 12 foot deep. I have two heat sources, two propane torches to heat that up. I cannot get that steel red hot uh, if I get it hot enough. I, I will I handle it. Each, each individual you can see ha has a handle welded on it, and they go into this oven individually. Uh, they come out, and, and my apprentice and I start twisting, who is my nephew, uh, and he's been with me for a number of years. He, he, he loves it, and it's very hard physical work. But then if you have the hard work, the reward for outstanding. So, so each piece of, of metal has got a, a, a mind of its own. You, you, you'll be twisting it and it, you'll get a revolution on it. You feel like you're doing pretty good. And then it kind of pulls you in. And as it pulls you in, you can feel that it's starting to tighten up. And all of a sudden, it throws you back to your feet because. You have created a spring. You have changed the molecular structure of that steel. And, and so every piece of steel, every, every one, you, you look at that chandelier and you see that as a complete unit. But if you separate that into each individual piece, then that's how it's done. It's done by hand that way. And that, that is true for with, with every piece of copper. Now, they just like a celebration when you look at this. They are. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, please. Yeah, Mike, are you still top welder? Uh, thank you for asking. You know, uh, uh, basically, uh, I, 
I was always an artist. Uh, elementary school, first grade, second grade. I was a kid that painted the windows for the holidays at school with the, the temper paint. We all, you know, <laughs> you remember it. I remember it. So, yeah. and, and then at, at high school age, very early high school age, I became involved with welding and steel. You know, welding shop, metal shop, high school. Oh, I was just enthralled by welding and by metal. I started doing sculpture immediately. Uh, and I did a lot of sound lots of lost symbols, uh, things like that. But, but of course, that didn't pay the bills. And I actually became a nuclear certified welder for the US government. Uh, I, I, all, all through the uh, mid 70s, late 70s, I, I, I was a nuclear certified welder. Uh, I worked on MX missile certified subs. I continued to do artwork, I did sculpture. Uh, because I was passionate about it. Um, I, would, I would have to do art shows within 500 miles so I could go back to work on it. So I did that for a number of years, and all of a sudden, one day, I couldn't do both. And, and as naive as this may sound, never once did I consider doing art as a business. I, I made all the money I needed to make with the government, and, and I, I, I did sculpture because I was passionate about it. And I was very apprehensive about taking my passion and turn to a business. But I didn't want to be that I said I wish I would have. So I jumped in and here I am 35, 36. Who knows how many years ago? But and, and it's still my passion. I still love what I do. I feel like I'm very blessed to get Will you repeat that question? Yeah, yeah. How much how much hotter is the oxyacetylene than the than the oxygen than the acetylene without the oxygen? Huge, huge, <laughs> thousands of degrees. It, it is a huge difference. You know, uh, with oxyacetylene torch, you, you you have you have your, your you have two tanks, and so one is acetylene and one is oxygen. And, and the whole idea is the acetylene actually heats the steel, and it heats, heats it to be in molten. And then, then you hit a little lever, I should have brought an example. Uh, and, and that actually, that air pressure, that oxygen pressure, actually pushes away that molten steel. And that, that, that's how you do it. Uh, if, if, if you look at Carlos, Carlos Page, who's another metal worker, it, he uses that force as well, and he takes away steel. Wonderful work. Wonderful work. So you can really see that. So it's day and night difference. So you would need that extra heat for steel that's like the steel. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. And, and you know, I've, I've never been accused of doing anything with me. So it's all, it's all pretty stout steel. And, and, and so you, you, you really do need that. Did, did that? Yeah, you're wrong. Good question. And I'm going to say, if you ever need a jar open, am I going to open a jar? Carlos? You got the money? You got the jar open? Yeah. Have a metal jar open? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> The, the insider secrets of an artist. So, so we're going to go from like large scale metal back to my Diana, who, I mean, you you are a, a, a miniature architect and artist in what you do. What, in addition to the artistry, your structure, I don't know how you figure this stuff out. I'm really fascinated with, uh, with the structure and in fact, I'm looking forward to working on art it's all art. Yeah. <laughs> and um, there are basic elements of theory that are really close. There are things that we learn to, to do. And um, then from that point, it's just creativity and really exploring. And some of it is like physics and just, you know, <coughs> science and shape. And it's just fascinating. 
I would really love to be a building also complex structures out there, tiny, little tiny pieces. And I feel like there's something to be said about humanity and how when we join together, each of us individually to create a stronger society, I think this keyboard is really a great way to express that idea. So do you draw out your letter? What I do is uh, start out with a uh, basic uh, structure, you can be a, a, a bagel type of structure, or it can be a little pod, it's called a casting pod, and it has some points on it, and little, you know, it's just my starter piece. And I really just allow uh, the work to evolve. I do have a palette that I determined that I would use, and I make a general idea of it. Of shape that I'm going to go for, but overall, I will just uh, let the piece flow. You know, I may have layers that I wasn't anticipating, or I might turn it into, you know, a regret, which is like the same statue. You see, I have a black and white piece here, and really, a piece is never done. It's honestly never done. I could pick this piece up right now, continue on with it, and do something else. So, really, it's very intuitive for me. And uh, you, for me, <laughs> my brain, so I have a busy brain, so this kind of work is very meditative. Most of people say it must be tedious, but I actually find it this really amazing quiet place where I can just focus and believe it's, it's really bad to do the work. Like this, this piece here, you know, it's got wings on it, um, and uh, you can see these layers. And really, this piece could be evolved further. Like, I could take those layers and do those on the other side, the smaller side. There's just, you know, that a point on this smaller stuff. But, yeah. These are They're bagels, right? They're bright. I mean, I will say, I would like to say too, that every um, piece that I do can be customized to more occasions. So we could take this measurement and we can that is in your colors, but the Georgia's and uh, these are sample pieces. And I can see that some of the ladies were trying them on and they seem to get pretty well. So, uh, you know, <laughs> the are bagels, bagels are the most complex, bagels are the most complex structures I can create, but conversely, they're the hardest to size because you have to get it over the knuckle part of the thing. And that can also be called this size, so it's a little tricky. So I just make that uh, it's like sitting about a slipper, maybe it. and someone can maybe make something for you that is, you know, of your own vision. But yeah, so well, the other day I walked by and it was a teeny tiny little beautiful leather and be the bracelet. And I had to try it on, of course, because I had no idea what I was making that for when I made it. And I'm like, me, the size of my like, whole tiny eight. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it fit perfect and it's now in my closet. You have something that's so great. So when you start eating, do you start like on the, the flowers or on the bristle? Where do you start? Uh, start, you start outside in? Start from the center and I work outward. So on uh, this piece here, started, and, and really I should have brought my little casting pod because it's amazing. It's about that big and off of it comes to everything. In the world that you can possibly make. You can start out with some casting on and it's hard to explain how to draw what I think I'm talking about, but I just start and then I detach the piece, which is something really fun to watch. So then I get to point out to detach the primary piece from the little casting on and then continue to work on it. So um, it will give me some of the general you know, shapes of the petals and the points and so forth. And each piece can have, you know, something like maybe this piece. I did not need to finish the piece of growing on the baking scale, so I can see how many frames of beans that I uh, use. So, you know, usually if I did like 50, 50 grams of these little kind of glass beans. So, yeah. But I look forward to doing some more uh, artistic art pieces that are just based on this concept. Yeah, and on an acrylic. Or this up larger on the wall. Yeah. 
Stay tuned for more future evolution. Pull it out and write on the sand. But I'm going to take it across. 
it talks to me about those events. I think our speak to us is for electric. Do you ever just feel like you're walking by and something is like, see, so just the way it speaks to you guys in the creation phase, would you agree it speaks to you when you know you have to take a moment to you? Like, it's big for me. So, uh, but what I love really is sort of our the juxtaposition we have like a, the 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 natural fiber sound dampening beautiful work um, unbelievable looks like from a distance like this is a real animal and then we have like the giant metal and the small meat and every one of these elements has that both fabulous and functional uh, benefit for us to enjoy it. so um, yeah, I think add, right? <laughs> 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 well, it is fun. We have spouses here. Diana's an artist, her husband's an artist. Michael's an artist, his wife is such a fabulous uh, support system. <laughs> and poet and writer who puts her in the shop. So uh, nice to have that back and forth because it really helps build a creative. Um, and we're visited. Yeah. So, uh, do we have any more questions? Anybody online questions? No? Okay. Well, um, you guys have been fantastic. We really would love for you if you haven't already been to the studio, or maybe if you have, go back and look again with fresh eyes after hearing this. Um, Sunny and Brad are, are right over here, kind of like two tenths joined. And uh, Diana is around. The corner facing the courtyard with beautiful displays and sort of beautiful little feet. And Michael, you come right to the courtyard. Um, that arrow kind of points to where the plant is. And he keeps it in the park. So um, <laughs> thank you, Michael, Diana, Sunday, Brad, and